put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. This is a test. Terminator Genesis, Genesis. credit to my ex-fiance for that one, 3D, and a Y in the title, of course, to make it edgy and hip. Yeah, sis, this in my computers, I get it. And to be fair, when you watch the movie, you will understand why they called it that. It will seem less goofy, but it will not actually be less goofy. That, that is the trick. You can watch this movie. Just, it's a straight line. Just go, and you don't look back. I should start with the plot, as I usually do. With... We start in the future, actually. And... Really... You don't necessarily expect it. You, you expect a lot from this movie. But this has a lot more character development than you might think. We open on Kyle narrating about the the future as as we've previously seen it depicted in these movies and you know how you're always told that like John is a you know we're, we're always told two things about John that he's a great military leader and that Kyle Reese Kyle Reese tells, tells us, you trust him. And in this, you see both, and you especially see the, the trust. There's, basically, the movie starts by setting up what is the exact relationship between John and Kyle. And I'm not going to give that away exactly, but just real male bonding and the movie goes with the movie doesn't feel like the need to break it up with with the no homo joke or anything no, no, no it's just it's there you have two major you know major movie characters both male in this you know really important military kind of thing and yeah there's you know there there are like there are, there's rank but they really like each other. They, they, you know, and yeah, and trust each other. And it, it really works. The, the movie starts there, starts by setting up who is John, who is Kyle, and how do they relate to one another. And that really, it, it really works for the rest of the film. It's, it's a, it was a great idea to, to start there. Anyway, it, it goes as we expect. Kyle, in order to not be blown to Reese's Pieces, agrees to go through time to stop the T-800 sent to 1984 and save and protect Sarah Connor. And as you know, if you've seen the trailers, the moment that he arrives, he finds that they've actually been waiting for him. And yeah, when when Kyle first sees the the T eight hundred that was sent back to kill Sarah in nineteen eighty four, they've already dealt with it. And yeah, you know, it's it's. it's Things are looking fairly up for the, you know, they, they don't have as big, you know, that, that's, that would seem to be a really big problem, but yeah, that's, that's out of the way. And then 
we get to the part that everybody and their mother has been whining about since the trailer revealed that John shows up in present day. Yes, it is not like third act twist. It's he's the main antagonist for the movie. He's it's it's very early on and yeah, it's not a mistake that they put him in the trailers and on the poster. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the adult John shows up. He, you know, in the present at his yeah, at at the age that that Kyle is used to seeing him. And you know, he, he heals the the scar on his face, you know, and the you know, not requiring copious amounts of heroin. And yeah, basically, like like he says to Sarah, you taught me survival. And yeah, he's he's not man anymore, he's not machine, he's more. And I'm not gonna give away exactly what he is, although you can somewhat deduct it from the, the trailers, but yeah, he's a significant problem. He is a, you know, in, in these you usually have, you know, a, a really dangerous Terminator out to get the, yeah, he's really, really dangerous. And he, in addition to having the, the you know, all this stuff that makes him really deadly, he knows these people. He knows Sarah, he knows Kyle, and he knows the T-800, so they kind of have to work off, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, he has detailed files about, no, 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 he knows them personally, you know, he's, he, he knows their weak spots, and, yeah, and it's a really clever twist, not as in, like, you know, near the end of the movie twist, no, no, the a twist as in, what they, a twist on what the other movies do, because he is, you know, the movie first shows him as this really trustworthy, and yeah, you know, you, you see why people trust him, you see why people are willing to go to war, you know, at the order of this man, and yeah, you know, in, in this, it's, it's, you know, if, after all this, the the movies have built him up as how he needs to survive, and he is, you know, he's the most important. Then once he, you know, once the thing happens, which I also will not give away how that happens in the movie, but... Yeah, once that happens, that kind of, you know, that maybe went to his head a little bit, that he's, you know, he's the one who has to survive, right? For for humanity's survival. Well, humanity's survival is like a distant second in his mind now, even though that was kind of the point of why he had to survive and make it. Yeah, now he's he's... And, and that's what happens, you know, when, when people tell you over and over, you are the single most important, it goes to your head, he's, he's gone kind of egomaniacal, and yeah, they, <laughs> they have to stop him, and then there is, of course, also, you know, the, the fact that, that, you know, they already stopped the T-800 does not mean that they didn't have business to attend to, they still have something to do in order to, you know, to, to fix things, and yeah, now, I suppose, and I also like, you know, the, the, the TV show, Terminator the Sarah Chron Chronicles, did also hint at maybe John was getting getting a little too friendly with these reprogrammed Terminators, so yeah. Now, and this also, you know, where before it was always the the threat has always been Skynet, and 
you know, usually it's each movie Skynet sends its newest, most dangerous Terminator to kill Sarah and or John, and you know that that one Terminator is kind of the representative of Skynet. So you know it, it remains this faceless machine. Now the enemy has a face, and it's a face that used to be very, yeah, you know, the, these people trusted him, and yeah, so it, it, it hits close to home, and, you know, I think it's, you know, every so often you need to do something like that, you need to change, you know, it's a kind of, you know, if, if they kept just doing the same thing with New Terminator each time, and it's ultimately just Skynet, you know, yeah, they've, they've kind of, it's played out, and to, to do this turn, and this also, one of the others might have done something similar to this, I'm not saying which, or confirming whether or not that one didn't do it so well, this one does. And the... I should probably just briefly let you know where, where I kind of stand on the franchise. You know, I absolutely love the first one. Special Edition, you know, better sound, you know, whatever. This one has the, the proper sound for the 45, so that is, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with the first one. The second one's a great film. I don't think it should have been a sequel to the first one. And it certainly does have a lot of problems to it, but... I really should have made a video detailing all the... Actually, maybe I did. I don't remember what I everything I said in the, the old one. I didn't get around to rewatching that before recording this. CinemaSins pointed out a lot of my problems with that. I was like, finally, I've been saying this for years, so... Yeah, and he, he went easy on it, actually. But, yeah, I, I you know, then, then there's movies three and four. I, I don't, the less you think about them, the, the, the better. And, you know, play the game. Yes, it's, it's a terrible game. It's an absolute, it's, licensed games sucks, suck. This is a special level of suckage, even for a licensed game. And and even even with that excuse, you would think that it's 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 barely a game. It it barely works. But you get to play as Techcom fighting Skynet in the future, and vice versa. But you know you you, you know that thing in the first movie where you know grab it's like you know, throw it, you turn it, and you throw it, and then it blows up. You get to use that. So yeah, that's why I played the game. But yes, briefly. The first one I consider one of the scariest, most memorable, and just most devastating action sci-fi movies ever made, and it really should have only been the one. And then when the second one comes in and retcon stuff and such, I would love the second one so much more if it would just be a different, you know, like like if if. Cameron kind of went nodded and okay, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I made another Terminator movie. This is a different movie with similar ideas. That would be so much better because it just goes in and and it just the 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 whole mythos made a lot less sense the moment that the second one comes out. Right from that opening skeleton, metal skeleton with guns. Why would you send those? into battle. They're, they're, it's, it's the skeleton of a Terminator. A Terminator is not a soldier, it's an infiltrator, and this I, I should really focus on this movie. I made last minute notes. Now, the the movie's two hours, not kind of the end credits. The... I already covered that. 
I already mentioned that the you know it starts in the future. You know, we we kind of we know about the the time travel to 1984. The movie kind of builds to that. I, I was you know kind of wondering you know, how much future stuff are we gonna get. And really hoping there wasn't just empty action scenes. Like I said, it actually it builds John and Kyle's relationship, and because of that, when John then shows up, because Kyle and Sarah have very different opinions on the whole John situation, and yeah, I probably shouldn't give away exactly, but but it just yeah, they 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 have different, you know. Opinions on on that matter, but yeah, the future stuff really builds up there. You know, yes, it's also great action. You know, the movie great action, thrown through. But yeah, it actually does something with that. I, I mean, I don't even. I think the third had future action scenes. I don't remember anything happening in those. I mean, the future, you know, action scenes that open the second movie help tell the story. So it's not, and, and in the first one, it also, you know, it sets up this, you know, backstory and kind of, you know, again, once you go beyond the second one, you know, then the future war scenes don't, just aren't as interesting. And yeah, here, they matter. And the, you know, it it's not just the kind of you know you spend just a few minutes in the future just to you know show off really cool you know you get you actually you get a sense of what it's like in this future so far we've only seen battles here you actually get like panning shots where this is how things look this is you know you you get a sense of scale and yeah, you know, I mean, we knew there were going to be future action scenes in this movie. I didn't expect them to really do what they did with them. And that's, I mean, the, that's something. If you take one thing away from this review, let it be that this movie gives us pretty much what you'd expect. But it adds little touches to it. So it's not, you know, this doesn't feel like you just watch the other ones and you know yeah it's there's there's a lot of the other ones in here but it it does interesting stuff with it every step of the way now i should say not all of the you know you know how the f from from the second one and onwards you kind of have the you know the reprogrammed Arnold Terminator with, you know, he has, to, there, there are some jokes with that, you know, and in the second one it worked great. In the third one it was atrocious, it was a parody of the films rather than a proper sequel, and here they, they go back to, to the good. It's, it's very much in the vein of the second one. Not all of that banter works, but it's especially, it's especially early on, so if you're like watching and think, oh man, Terminator's not funny anymore, wait. It's just, it's some of those early ones where it doesn't, yeah. Now, the, I shouldn't say that in, just yet. The, this, this does well with how Sarah is the smallest person around in in the in the in the group, you know. She's 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 petite. And in spite of that, she really commands scenes and they do great stuff with that. There's uh, Yeah, I sh I shouldn't say exactly what, but but just there's an early scene where she and Kyle are disagreeing. And you can see, like, she's she's a head shorter than it. Again, I can make short people jokes. I'm tiny myself. It, it just, yeah, you 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 don't want to mess with her. She is, and and not in a kind of yeah. She's she's she commands, you know, attention. There's a, yeah, she, you feel like she could mess you up. Now, 
when uh, I guess there's a Terminator around when the when Kyle first meets the reprogrammed Terminator he doesn't realize it's reprogrammed so he kind of goes in you know he he's in like combat mode and he tries to tell him and yeah it's it's I shouldn't really say exactly what happens because it's pretty funny but yeah I guess the T-1000 just grabbed the you won't even know you won't even know what that means if you didn't watch the director's cut yeah once <laughs> once the two of them start conversing they disagree they they there's there's this thing of Kyle he does not trust terminators because he's never seen one reprogrammed before he is you know this is this is still you know i mean he didn't even experience you know the the <laughs> yeah he you know how the the second movie has a reprogram yeah Kyle didn't see that yet so that yeah and on the other hand, the Guardian is real protective of Sarah. And it's like, you're supposed to be able to protect her. And yeah, they, they have some really fun stuff with that. And there's like this, <laughs> there's this bit where they're like getting ready for, for combat. You know, they're, they're arming. And the two of them, each grab some clips, I think, I'm pretty sure they're assault rifle, not entirely sure, I'm, I'm thinking M4 clips, and they gotta, you know, they're, they're empty, so they have to put in the, the, you know, the individual bullets, and they have this, you know, yeah, you know how how men get when when we really want to prove something. And there's another guy. It's they they just yeah they're they're staring each other down while they're just putting you know bullets into the shot. And of course you know it's it's like when Thor was drinking in you know was was yeah trying to drink Eric under the table. You know who's gonna come out on top, and you just see Kyle keeps trying, and it's just yeah, and they they get a lot of great stuff out of that. Now the three D early on is mostly atmosphere, you know, the future, and you know, you have those you know bits of dust that you know that that there's always a lot of dust in the in the post apocalyptic, yeah. So so that you know gets you know that that you know you feel like you could reach out and touch that excuse me without that really looking like you know if it wasn't there you wouldn't necessarily notice it as much so it's basically you know excuse me atmosphere like some of the 3d in avatar you know and it does also add some depth to a number of scenes I don't know for sure, but I would wager it's a post-conversion, and yeah, you, you don't really have to go for the 3D showing. Now, Kyle and Sarah do not really get along, because Kyle was expecting this, you know... <laughs> Yeah, he he was expecting a a softer Sarah, or at the very least, you know, he he know he knows that she grew up to be a warrior because John, you know, came out of that. So of course, you know, but he's meeting the 1984 Sarah, and <laughs> which again is what you know she's. It would be really patronizing to say, like, you know, she's she's cute or so, but she's, you know, you don't necessarily expect that much force to be behind some. Which, you know, I I don't know too much about the actress, but I think that is more like one of her strengths that she can really project much more force than you'd expect from someone of like her size and her age. 
and she can also do the the softer stuff and that's again too many action movies have these you know badass women where they're no longer really human beings they're just war machines that you know happen to be women and this one really gets and and it doesn't you know it's it's not that she's just a woman or anything she is really tough and badass she you know i mean there's enough badass to go around but the sarah in this kicks serious ass it's she's she's yeah <laughs> and yeah it's it's you know they're they they in, you know yeah so so with that they do still have that she's a human being she does have emotions but she's not you know she's not like being controlled by her emotions or such you know it's but yeah there's there's clearly a person there it's not just you know a bunch of you know just pure muscle and you know trigger fingers and strategic thinking and at the same time sarah is like right so so you're the guy huh you're you know i've, I've been waiting my whole life knowing that you were going to show up and just it, she has a line about how she she hasn't really had a lot of choices in her life because of the whole thing. You know, this is a Sarah that's had time to adjust to the the role that she and her son will play in the future. So she's, you know, she's lived with that for a lot of years. And with all that waiting for the heavy lifting, for the the battle to come, yeah, she's she's had some time to think and it's like am I anything but muscle and strategic thing? Do I get a choice here at, at some point? And, and so with Kyle, he's kind of representing that, yeah, she just, you know, it's, it says so in the timeline, she has to do this. And yeah, and, and there's a lot of fun with the two of them. Yeah. Now... The the Dysons are in this, and they are they're working with someone. Let's let's go with that. And the also there are some real badass weapons in this. You you can understand how they are you know, taking out, you know, robots with this weaponry that is available, you know, before the, you know, the, the robot apocalypse. And there's genuine drama here, and that, again, you know, again, essentially, you know, the, the, the action and the, a lot of the setup here, we know so the important thing is to do something different with it which this very much does and to make it matter to make it have an impact and that is also something that i would definitely say the third and the fourth really lacked and i do believe they were trying but the third one had a number of dumb ideas which is saying nothing of the fourth one and the fourth one was directed by McGee, so there's that. But yes, we do have a similar to the others core, you know, yeah, we have the core scenario of, you know, yeah, someone goes back in time to protect Sarah and or John, and there's a Terminator after them, and they, 
you know, try to destroy it and maybe try to improve the future somehow. I understand people who, you know, yeah, pe people who wish that that wasn't what they saw when they watched the trailers for this. If you ask me, without that core scenario, you know, if, if you don't have an evil Terminator going back, you know, through time to kill Sarah and or John Connor, is not a Terminator film. And, and you know, like I said before, I'm the first guy who's going to say that Terminator should not be a series. But it is. And this is an actually, you know, this is the first time we've had a good Terminator movie since 91. So, so yeah, you know, I, I can completely understand if you don't, if you still don't want, you know, but, but yeah. Yeah, so, so without, without that, you don't really have a Terminator movie, which is why the fourth one is just really a stock post-apocalyptic dystopian man versus, you know, something action war film. It's, it's like people say with, with the Matrix Revolutions, change the names and it no longer feels like it belongs in the same series. And yeah, that Salvation was supposed to lead to a trilogy and it didn't. This is supposed to as well and I don't know what they're gonna do with the next two now that you know, they, they stuck to the formula this, this time, but yeah, I, I don't really know what they're going to do with this, but I do, I want to see it. I want to see what they're thinking, what, what, where they're going to go with this, because yeah, this was tremendously impressive. Now with so so yeah to to go more into the the plot or you know what makes up this you know it it somewhat meshes terminators 1 and 2 in you know and, and again you you see that in the excuse me trailers you know the there's already a reprogrammed T800 and Sarah's you know a warrior but Kyle is also going back to protect so yeah, you know, and the it it does you know it it does retcon as you know time travel allows for, and you know this is the first time they really do have fun with the time travel. Before it was just set up for the movie, you know, back, you know, the, the explanation for how the movie happened. Well, we use time travel to send two, you know, humanoid beings back in time. So we now have a movie. And, you know, before, you know, either it didn't lead to change or didn't change much or, you know, enough. This time it may have changed too much. Now, we do have, you know, an alternate timeline in this, and yeah, they, they have that to deal with, and it kind of reverses Kyle from being, you know, the one who comes back and has all this knowledge of the future that nobody else really believes, to now he's a little bit out of the loop, and yeah. And we, yeah, so, so you know, we've got calories, we've got Sarah as a badass, we've got the reprogrammed T-800 versus the, you know, original T-800, and the, <laughs> as you already know from the trailer, when Kyle has to travel through time, you know, he does have to, stripped down completely and I'm just you know even in the trailer looking at it, I'm like you want to give the guy a little privacy yeah but but that does confirm that it's it's not 
you know, a phone booth you go into and, and use for, for time travel. So that's, yeah. And the, the bus chase on the bridge that, again, trailers show, it, it fits in this sort of sister to Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 that this movie is. And, yeah, the... In case you haven't watched the trailers, I'm not going to give away what happens with the the bus on the bridge, but from what little they have put out already of, like, featurette kind of stuff, some of that is real. They actually did some of that physically with a school bus. on. So, so that's really cool. It's always great when you can do something like that physically it just it feels more real than you know cg and i will say the movie had less philcons than i expected and there wasn't a single mutt man or rib woman in sight this plays with iconic scenes using time travel to show up prepared for you know knowing what the future will hold and you know thus injecting some action some, some awesome action scenes in you know a few of the scenes from you know Terminator 1 and such that didn't already have you know it's yeah it's it's hard to come by you know scenes in the first two with not too much effort, but yeah this yeah they, they managed to find it and they they yeah very nicely done. So the the T eight hundred, you know, showing up in yeah in in eighty four, and suddenly the reprogrammed T eight hundred, you know, yeah, shows up in that same yeah. And when Kyle goes into the clothes store, it's not a regular cop that he faces. And, you know, and, and yeah, personally, I see it as paying tremendous respect to the first two and to the iconic scenes of them. I understand considering, you know, a bad element, cheap, too easy, a ripoff. If you do think so, then, yeah, the movie's not really going to do anything to <laughs> to make you any less bothered by that. And the whole movie does, you know, there's not an awful lot of those scenes, but the whole movie is really going off, you know, okay, so the first and the second, you know, you, you, you know basically what happened there, but what if you know, we, we hit an alternate timeline, and, yeah. Now, the, as, as CinemaSins points out, you know, when you see the Golden Gate Bridge in, you know, in movies being, excuse me, being destroyed, it's, we see it be destroyed, excuse me, so often that, you know, yeah, if, if one actually went to and, and saw the Golden Gate Bridge intact, you wouldn't really believe that it was, uh, yeah. Now. The. This also puts the. Yeah, the, the, the threat is very close to where they, you know, they, they don't have an awful lot of time, and there's a very effective ticking clock. And I'm not going to give away exactly what it is, but it does, of course, have to do with Judgment Day. Now... One of the writers of this wrote and directed Dracula 2000, which, and the two direct video sequels that I have not watched. I guess it means he's good with the series. He did real well here. 
for sure. And J.K. Simmons is in this as, you know, basically kind of an alcoholic cop who's been following Sarah's case for decades. It, yeah, they, they did real well with, with this character. And yeah, he, he brings us some fun cop stuff, which every movie but the first one has severely lacked. I mean, the first one is not a funny movie, but it has some really funny characters and moments. And Vukovic and Traxler are so much fun together. You know, with with you know the 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 coffee. You know that that coffee is two hours old. Mm -hmm. I put a cigarette on it. Ah, just fantastic. I really, really love that Lance Henriksen did get to play a, a role with, with some meat on it in the film, even though he didn't get to play Terminator. And, yeah, it's, yeah, he's, he's, he's fun. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's J.K. Simmons. He's, 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 he's very funny. And, I, I do take issue with in in the the you know featurette stuff and such. He's being interviewed and he's like, he can't place the first 1980 whatever 1984. Mr. Simmons, should I, don't make me whiplash you. Now the I suppose that. But but yes, the the Arnold's the the reprogrammed T eight hundred has been protecting Sarah since she was a kid. You know, there were there, there was a Terminator sent to kill her parents, which solidifies my theory that Skynet has a thing for killing Sarah's mother off screen, and. Yeah, the, you know, Arnie showed up and, you know, protected her there and has protected her ever since. And thus she grew up from childhood, you know, working to, working towards being a warrior. And with him as the, you know, yeah, with, with him as the one parent that, she had and it's you know they they have a real father daughter relationship you know there's yeah i sh i shouldn't say too much but but yeah you know they 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 sometimes argue like you know a, a father and you know their offspring and you know there are nice little things where you know yeah, there's there's a point where Sarah is like in in the driver's seat, and the guardian is walking in, and you know and and just w without even you know just just like that he goes Sarah Connor seatbelt you know so yeah some real nice yeah and it's it's something we haven't really seen before the the closest we've seen was the T eight hundred being sort of a father figure for John when he was a child but that was you know we saw him meeting that T-800 this is a t you know they you know they 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 really care about each other but they're also a little used to each other so so there's that kind of thing of you know one of the first things we see one of their first interactions that we see is them kind of you know arguing over something like you know like family like like you do with people that you know and, and you're just used to them being there because they've spent all these years together and yeah and it's a you know it's it's the first time that Sarah has a father figure also you know Kyle was more of a, a partner and you know protector and yeah 
now and and you know as you know as you may have already heard the reason that the the T800 that we see in the movie is Arnor Arnie's actual age is because the the flesh is like that of humans and it ages and yeah he's been with her for decades so yeah And this finally brings Sarah back, and only now does she finally get to say the iconic line, come with me if you want to live. We've had two movies without her. She's one of the four main characters. She, you know, in Terminators 1 and 2, she was immensely important, you know, and, yeah, and, and she's only on actor three, and each of them looks right. Yeah, she just swapped Game of Thrones actors and you know and I've you know Lena Headey did you know did absolutely great as Saren and that's still you know I yeah great work on that Emilia Clark does a great job as well and it's also the the two characters are different you know the there there are two takes on the characters because this is a Sarah who in 1984, knew you know had known for like 10 years that she was going to be a warrior, whereas Lena Headey's was a you know mid to late 90s Sarah who has you know who who has only been back in you know John's life for a few years after you know and after yeah, after the events of the first two movies and this one is a Sarah for you know where those two didn't happen that way so yeah they're very different and they they both work it's you know that's that's also kind of the thing you, you want to be able to see you know perform and say that's that actor you know that's it's and and yeah they they very very clearly defined they it doesn't feel like Emilia is just doing what Lena did and you know the poor John. You know, like, like I said, you know, Sarah. She's only on actor three. She looks right each time. John, he's on actor five, six if you count the older one in Terminator Two. And he keeps changing his appearance tremendously. You know, that, that was the joke, even with the third movie. That the, I like Nick Stahl. I haven't watched him a ton, but he makes a magnificent yellow bastard, and that I will always love him for. He does not look like Edward Furlong, and that was very immediately obvious to anyone who watched Terminator 3, which is especially hilarious because he's supposed to be recognized by the Claire Danes character, which, yeah, if the, yeah, and, and, you know, Cinema Snob and friends pointed out that, you know, it's very oddly cast, and yes, crap, I don't remember this guy's names, but yeah, he does not look like Michael Bean, absolutely, and, Michael Bean is Kyle Reese, so there's there's not really anything, but he does pretty good with it, and it he feels like Reese, and it's yeah he it it yeah it it gets it really, and the now I. Sarah is somewhat sexualized in this, which is really, it's, it's pretty much the first, the, I mean, there was, there were things in the first two where, you know, but, but you don't look at, and it's not, Linda Hamilton looked great in both movies, so it's not that, but, yeah, you, you don't necessarily look at her and think, you know, just, yeah, you know, she it's not like majorly sexy and, you know, 
And we know James Cameron can do that because he did it with Kate Winslet and Jamie Lee Curtis. Which is, of course, also, you know, the, those two are also really beautiful. But, yeah, still, he, he could have done it with Linda Hamilton, and he did not. And it's... It doesn't really detract from the film, and there, you know, there almost kind of has to be some. It it works as part of the 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 thing with Kyle and Sarah not really getting along. So any any sexual tension there might be between them is just gonna further kind of frustrate that, you know. So yeah, and to that end, I would definitely say. Yeah, and and then there are those who might theorize that it's <laughs> it's what happens when you bring in a a Game of Thrones act actress to yeah, but but yeah, and you know we we already knew that James Cameron writes great strong female characters, you know to you know as as nostalgia chick puts it in the Titanic review, you know, they're, they're, they're actually there, you know, writing and write them as people, not as token characters. And, you know, they, they aren't constantly, you know, showing, you know, I'm a woman, I could still do this. It's just, you know, they, they're a character and a woman. It's not, you know, they have, you don't constantly have to be reminded that it's, you know, a female character, or nor does he go, you know, and just try to masculinize. So, no, but yeah, this one does that fairly well. You know, if you, if this is the first you watch, you will really consider Sarah a badass. You know, you will, you will pay attention when she speaks, and it, yeah. With that, I did worry that maybe Kyle would kind of just be there, much like Wolverine and X-Men Days of Future Past. But, yeah, they, they rather than that, you know, and, and thankfully they did not go and make him helpless so that, you know, so that Sarah would constantly be rescuing, which, again, you know, that kind of, you know, try to make the woman seem strong by disempowering a male character so that she's kind of, you know, pulling the weight for, for him, kind of, you know. Such writers have their heart in the right place, but they're going about it wrong. Excuse me. In this, rather, they are equals. They both contribute, both in the fighting and, excuse me, and in strategic thinking and such. Now, the this does give us. I shouldn't say how many, but but we do get some cool new hunter killer stuff, and the yeah ter Terminator e powers that are yeah and the 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 various terminator powers are used quite quite well now Something you may have noticed is that I have not yet mentioned the T-1000. He's not in it all that much. And there's a specific reason why he's there. And you will know before the movie is over. But yeah, they did, they... <sighs> 
yeah, he he kind of got just yeah, he's not in it all that much. So so you know, going to the movie just be aware there is very little term, very little T one thousand. But you know, we do get a lot of really badass Terminator on Terminator action. The this one this one addresses something that I've or fixes something that I does write something that I've something that I've had a problem with with every each of the sequels. You know why why are they going at a Terminator using shotguns or assault rifles or pistols? Those by themselves will not stop a Terminator. You know, why not use like grenades or something? You know, not everything that explodes is like big and clunky. How about like little, you know, yeah, just pineapple grenade with, with like sticky kind of, you know, double glue tape on or something. So, you know, you see a Terminator, you pull that out, remove the, the sticky thing so it'll stick pull the pin, throw a grenade at it or something, that'll put a dent in it, but just shooting, yeah. In this, they do actually use, you know, it's very early on when they're being hunted by Terminator, Cal just straight up fires a grenade into it with, with you know, one of those assault rifle underhand, you know, grenade launchers. Yeah, you know, I mean, in the first one, they made explosives as soon as they could, and to an extent also the case in the second one. And, you know, in the pilot of the show, at least they had, you know, a, a grenade launcher in that bank vault. The This it, it does have some nice foreshadowing, much like the first two. They're, they they don't particularly do like you know have have the Terminators do dumb things where the audience like the Terminator wouldn't do that, which again happened in three and four. And yeah, the the action, cool badass, sometimes you know fairly creative as well. And yeah, the. I'd probably say the the really standout scene, yeah, Golden Gate Bridge with with school bus. That is the one that you really remember, and it would be even if they hadn't plastered it all over the trailers. And you know, yeah, or some someone mentioned you know we have the Terminator Two. E ironic humor with the T-800, which, you know, they, they knew to do that in the second one, because in the first one, this character is there to be, you know, unstoppable and even, even scary, you know, he is, it, it, I read the abridged, reread the abridged script for Terminator 1, where it's brought up that it has sort of a slasher vibe. I've always thought so. It's it's basically, yeah, you know, this is he's he's a serial killer that and and he is incredibly difficult to stop. So yeah, and and that's yeah, that that works wonderfully in that first movie. But then when they do the second one, and they're like, well, now we, you know. The moment you have another T-800, you have to do some, you, you have to dispel the, the, you know, yeah, you, you have to deal with the sort of tension that is naturally there for this kind of character, which, yeah, he's, he is very kind of one single-minded and, and direct and kind of, you know, and, and you have to have some fun with that. And that's where the second one, you know, right from the introduction of Arnold there, you know, it it's 
it does him, you know, plays bad to the bone to, to you know, as he, you know, moves out of, as he leaves that, you know, that bar. And, yeah, it's, you have to do that. And this does it as well. And you have some of the, you know, trying to fit in kind of thing with, you know, which they also did in that. But in this, it's, you know, because Sarah, you know, even even without, you know, even even with only the the guardian there as you know, as a parent from from you know from being a kid, you know, she's still she's she's polite. She's a nice person, you know. She's. She, she can be snarky and, you know, such, but, yeah, she's, she's nice. She's kind of innocent, you know, and, yeah, so, so she made him polite, you know, so, Kyle Reese, it is nice to meet you, and the big smile, which, you know, yeah, that, 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 you know, he had to learn how to do. Now, but yeah, this, you know, where, where, you know, in, in the second one, John, with his street smarts, was making it cool rather than polite. You know, un unlike the first one, this isn't, you know, dark, scary, and noir with nightmarish future sequences. This is a PG-13, but you don't really feel it. it. It helps that the Terminators, you know, the, the moment you shoot a Terminator, you can maybe take some skin off and there will be, you know, a metal skeleton underneath. They can do that even though it's PG-13, you know, so that helps. There, you know, there are a lot of PG-13 action movies in recent years where the most obvious thing in the world that it's PG-13. In this, you don't notice it so much, even though it is, you know, I mean, even the third one was an R, you know. Salvation was PG-13 also, but Salvation in general was, yeah. Now, this only briefly gets into kind of disaster porn, which, uh, you know, that's a staple of, of big budget action films of, you know, recent years. The, you know, the, the scale of some of the action is really massive, and there are some action scenes at night. And this also has one of the first helicopter chases where the good guys are in a helicopter. And, you know, James Cameron uh, basically says he loves this film. To him, it's the third movie in this series. And, yeah, I completely see what he means. And, yeah. And this was directed by Alan Taylor, I think, who directed Thor The Dark World and... Yeah, he did he did well on that. He does well on this. And apparently Arnie will be in the next of you know the next of the two you know films in this trilogy. Now and you know the the robotics and makeup effects and such were done by Stan Winston's successor so that's great and the you know this had you know the the 84 scenes they you know they made sure the you know the the colors matched the you know the way they look in the first one and you know the future sequences look like the future in the second movie, which again I would say it should be in 
the way they looked in the first, but then again, the, the way they looked in the first to to in that show the you know th this does show them taking the the laboratory with the the time displacement equipment and any kind of victory would not yeah you you can't really do a victory on the on the human side in the 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 way that the future s scenes looked in the first one that pretty much yeah which i still say is the way it should be but yeah and i'm not going to give away exactly when the you know when this is set particularly you know it very early on kyle travels back to 1984 and i will not give away what happens from there what time yeah and the ending is satisfying and excuse me does not feel like we've seen it before it you know again to quote James Cameron the franchise has been reinvigorated it's yeah the ending is very it it works as part of Terminator but it's not something we've seen before and again I yeah they 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 really managed to to go somewhere new with with this and yeah it's tense intense it knows when to be quiet when to be loud and just you know it doesn't it doesn't try to constantly have big action and such. There, there are scenes where it's more, you know, more calm and just, yeah, you know, because we need that. We can't constantly be going a million miles a minute. That is, you know, how it should be in the big action scenes, but yeah. And yeah, I've. I've sort of already mentioned this, but it really gets you emotionally invested. And there's a... Throughout, there is this... This hope for a better... A, yeah, for... for a hope to avoid the horrors of the post-apocalyptic war on Skynet, and it's this is this is the kind of thing that could so easily end up corny and not work at all, and be groan-inducing every time it's brought up, but it works. It really works, and you know, yeah, you you completely follow you're 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 there with them in the moment when when they're talking about you know trying to make the world a better place trying to avoid judgment day yeah you know you you believe it and yeah i'm i wouldn't really say there's much of any corn or cheese in this which you know, the second one has plenty of, you know, the, the sunblock line and the thumbs up, and yeah. Now, the, the, the TV show gave us what we want from Terminator film, you know, fighting a Terminator, you know, and trying to stop one and seeing, you know, T-800 be badass and yeah, such. And then, you know, it became a problem as the show went on and had too many episodes where we see a T-800 be stopped. And, you know, it, it got to be where you feel like it's, you know, they're, they're overexposed, they're less scary and exciting, and they seem like they're easier to deal with. And I, I can't completely... The, this movie does maybe have at least one too many Terminators and it's yeah it's it's kind of unfortunate it's 
it does this the the thing that more recent action movies do and have these really you know these action scenes where you're really like wow that's you know that's amazing and then you realize oh that was actually kind of oh okay and yeah it's basically when you watch it and you definitely should watch it the first half hour or 45 minutes just no matter what you see keep in mind it does get better than this because early on you do feel like they're kind of you know there there are things that feel like they're getting resolved a little anticlimactically and yeah but now the you know given that Sarah grew up differently in this than in the 84 one I was maybe a little bit relieved to see that she did not have her pedigree Frank because she, she could have a boyfriend if she just sell it. It's, you know, she would not talk about anything. It's, it's, anyway, yeah, this has great chases, shootouts. You know, you have the 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 some some motorcycle action and yeah. Unlike Salvation, this does not have any Transformers e Hunter Killers. And, you know, also unlike Salvation, you know, Arnold's actually back. You know, I mean, for that one, they were basically offering him a cameo. <laughs> Who do you think they are? Sly? But yeah, the, the the fourth one did bring us to a new level of convenient writing for the series. This one really doesn't do much of that at at all. And again, that I say that as someone who loves the first one, convenient writing was always part of this series right from the first one. And you know, they they redo some action scenes with. You know, a twist on them, much like, you know, I, I just rewatched the the first two in in really quick succession and really trying to notice things. And when you do, you kind of realize some action scenes, more than a few action scenes in the second one, are kind of action scenes from the first one, but done with a twist. And yeah, this one does some of that as well. And the I suppose that and this also does you know do that thing where you know if a dog is barking, it means you know there's a terminator around. I really maybe then maybe in the next one, I would love for just one of these to have that, you know, and a dog barks and one of the characters is like, there must be a Terminator around, and someone else says, no, the dog is barking. That does not mean there is a Terminator around. It just means there's something that the dog doesn't really like. If, if it's like trained to be a, a, a guard dog or something, it's, it's you know, there's there's something threatening somewhere around. It's not necessarily a Terminator, because that's like every single time a, a dog barks in one of these movies, he's like, Terminator. And... In this one, there's not really a long time that passes without... Yeah, I already said that, you know, it's John, without John, you know, being right on their tail, you know, there's no long long stretch of the movie where he suddenly just disappears and suddenly when when he comes back you're almost like oh I almost forgot that he was a title character 
and yeah, the the action is you know somewhat in you know so, some of the action are these big set pieces, and now I've always you know. When, when it comes to Terminator games, I mean, I haven't played all of them, but, you know, I only played a few of them, but according to Wiki, they're like action-adventure, shooting, you know, shooters, beat-em-ups. Sure, there's a lot of action in the films, but the Terminator is actually really tough to stop. And, you know, yeah, it would be really interesting to have a game set in the future with, you know, seemingly no hope, disempowered human player characters, and you know, none of those dumb soldier skeletons like me, you know. That's what it it looks like when that's what like the Terminator looks like when it you know, when everything but the skeletons melted off. That's not something that just walks around and fights. That's yeah. And in the first one it wasn't. But you know, yeah, just have a future with these big you know, flying things and tank tread things, flying, firing like plasma and laser, which also they, they do in this, you know, unlike Salvation, but yeah, you know, and, and put in some new HKs as well and just basically make it like, you know, a strategy game, a, a stealth survival horror game set in the ruined city of the post apocalyptic dystopian future with a ton of patrolling robots to avoid, you know, something like commandos, although in that you can take them up as well as in Thief, but Thief 2 already has these big, you know, slightly bigger than humans, you know, patrolling robots that you do not want to be noticed by, and yeah, you know, it you know, maybe rarely you could fight one of these things and just barely live through it and then leave really fast, like you see in the, you know, flashbacks to the future in the first movie. You know, how about something like Prisoner of War, where you're basically like... Yeah, briefly, Prisoner of War, stealth game, you are a Prisoner of War during World War II, you're in a camp and you're, you know, you're being treated like a human being. It's not you know, it's not a concentration camp, you're getting meals and such, you have to, you know, you can't be seen in an area that you're not allowed to at that point in the day, and, you know, you have to be there for, you know, when they, when they count, you know, head count in, in the morning, and if not, they will scour the camp for you, and, yeah, how about something like that? I mean, you could even make it, you know, that they're in a work camp, you know, that the, it's, yeah, you know, and, and that, you know, the robots expect you to be certain places at certain times, and then, you know, because in that, you don't get to fight any of the, you know, the guards. If you're seen, that's it. You know, you can, you can try to run. You can't fight. And if you're, you know, if they're spotted, they'll try to shoot at you. If you're shot, hit once, that's it. You, you know, you go to the hospital and you can try again, but, you know, didn't work that time. Something like that for, for this could, could really work, I think. Yeah. I should briefly specify earlier, I said that, you know, you know the, the trailer that showed John the the twist that John was the you know was going to be an antagonist in this that you know people were whining about it even before I realized how early this you know I was gonna just talk about how that you know that aspect in the in the thoughts on video but right from the first time I watched that trailer I was like there's plot because the trailers before that just said Kyle like in the first movie goes back to 1984 but things are different that's it that's not a plot that's yeah you know even the third movie had plot and you know each movie has kind of 
built onto, you know, and then you can, you know, complain about how it's it's a series where each movie has the same core scenario. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And still say it shouldn't be a series, but since it is, I'm just glad that it's finally good again. But yeah, you know, one, two, Terminators 1, 2, and 3, each, you know, the first one has a, a central plot, and the, the second and third kind of say, okay, so we have that, and we build this onto it. And, yeah, before the trailer that showed John as an antagonist, this one didn't show, nothing in the trailers before that showed that this had a plot, just that Kyle goes back, there's a Terminator after them, and they're, you know, so what What do they do? What what changes? What What is different? And, you know, yeah, why, why are we watching specifically? Because, I mean, like, I... I've mentioned that it does a lot with, you know, the, the character relationships are all different. The characters are all different. And that's great. And that's really something that needs to happen. But at the end of the day, there really needs to be a plot. There needs to be something that they're trying to accomplish. So, yeah. Now, yeah, I've, I've sort of already mentioned that, you know, they, they have this hope of a future without the apocalypse and just you know family is a real theme in this where you know yeah the characters are kind of like a family and sometimes you know they'll they'll bicker and such but at the end of the day still work together and there's also the negative part of family with John there having gotten too close to them and being really dangerous to them and such and yeah it's it's it, it works, and it's not only the main characters that we see the whole family thing through. There are, there are other... yeah. And there's this sort of... this motif of a dream of a home with parents, with just, you know... yeah, just a, a happy, innocent childhood, basically. And that pretty much covers everything. In closing, my ex-fiance suggested that I go into how this movie will play to audiences who haven't really watched the first movies or don't, maybe don't remember them or such and basically you can go in completely blind there are just going to be things that will be you know when when you go into this and you have watched at least the first two because this really doesn't have anything to do with it, you know you could say that it retcons three and four but it retcons one and two as well so yeah if you know going into this knowing what happens in the first movie and the second movie you're gonna appreciate some things like you know the the Arnie smiling is one of the smaller like hints there are bigger things that you know but you can go in blind. You just, you know, there there are some things that the characters are going to be talking about that you don't necessarily get until you, you know, yeah, there are some characters who don't know certain things, and when they're told, maybe the first time you find out yourself, if you didn't watch the other one. Or if, if you don't know the major events of the first two movies, you know, if if you really want that and you don't you haven't watched them or you don't remember or whatever, you can just, you know, wiki the most you know, the biggest events of the first two movies and just from there go with yeah. But it's very much made for people who love the first two. And yeah, you can really you know, it's it's made by and for people who love the first two movies.
I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.